so the this spring framework course is of eight modules so in the module 1 we will be introduced to the world of spring framework and in module 2 we will focus on the spring configuration stuff then module 3 we will be talking about aspect oriented programming as well as data access object that is spring TAO then module 4 we will be talking about data access in module 5 we will be talking about spring web this is a web module and in module 6 we will be integrating stress to JSF with spring and spring webflow module 7 we will be focusing on spring security and module 8 we will talk about spring integration okay so objectives for today's session would be at the end of this module we will be able to understand the need of spring framework and its features understand spring architecture explain the very famous inversion inversion of control that is dependency injection signify the different types of dependency injection and the life cycle of a bean okay good guys let us start our session Management of ABC Private Limited has decided to make a web application for their customers. So the management calls the web development team which is led by James. You can see James here. Okay. So the team of four, James, Rocky, Arjun and Lena. So James is leading the meeting. Team, there is an urgent requirement so I call you here. One of our customers needs us to build an application for them. We have very less time and the customer wants the application to be up and running before Christmas. Do you guys have any idea how can we go about with this? Because if we start making the application by the usual way, it will take a lot of time. Then I have also seen in our previous projects, there were a lot of codes that did not do anything. We want something fast and efficient. So this, uh, the code that did not do anything part is, uh, James was talking about non-functional requirements. So one of the team members uh, has suggested to go with spring framework uh, Rocky says can you uh, Rocky can you tell us more about spring how it matches our requirement because as Rocky suggested to go with spring so the other team member is curious to know about why he opted for spring framework then Rocky started explaining spring is well established framework with lots of features that helps the developers to work on their application rather than worrying about non-functional code. So being an end developer you can focus on what is required to deliver instead of in order to deliver the required things what are the non-functional requirements that you need to satisfy. Okay so that you can get rid of when you go for any framework like Spring. It also increases developers productivity and reduces the application development time because most of the things are already offered by the framework related to um, non-functional requirements as you are focusing on only functional requirements so it obviously results in uh, better application development yeah so he's Mr. Rod Johnson started spring source company and developed spring framework for apache 2.0 in june 2003 the spring framework is an open source application framework and inversion of control container for the java platform it provides comprehensive infrastructure support for developing java applications 
Spring handles the infrastructure so we can focus on our application. So all the infrastructure related stuff will be handled by the fr framework called Spring and we can focus only on our business. What is the meaning of non-functional requirement? So basically non-functional requirements are not uh, the requirements that we do or the, uh, the features that we develop. Usually non-functional requirements could be, for example, if you take Flipkart's uh, 1 billion uh, sale. So if you recall that stuff, there were lakhs of people, lakhs of users were accessing Flipkart at a time. So here the non-functional requirement would be, it should handle lakhs of user sessions. So that is a non-functional requirement. What is a functional requirement here? When I select an item to the cart and when I want to uh, purchase that item, when I want to place an order with respect to that item, that would be a functional requirement. And here the non-functional requirement would be handling one lakh sessions. Next. Why Spring? because there are a number of other frameworks available in the market. So why should I go for Spring? So Spring is a framework like Struts and Hibernate. Spring is famous in the industry. The learners should focus on learning more of Spring compared to other technologies now. Spring and Hibernate are extremely popular and widely used in the industry. Spring framework is lightweight as it does not involve installation, startup and stop activities associated with a container. Okay, so first statement is it is same as the other frameworks like Struts and Hibernate. So it is same in the context that it is a framework and it is more than what Struts and Hibernate. Okay, how we will see in our sessions. And now Spring has become the de facto standard for web application development with respect to an enterprise. Okay. Next, learners should focus on learning Spring. Why? Because we have a classic example with uh, within our session itself. Uh, what is that? Siddiqui has asked, uh, can we cover Spring with Hadoop integration? So what is uh, what I want to relate here is Hadoop is a new technology and Spring as a framework has an integration layer with Hadoop directly. And we have several NoSQL databases which were evolving recently. Okay, so we have integration with those NoSQL databases also. For example, MongoDB which is currently uh, very good at market and Spring has an integration layer with MongoDB also. So what does it mean? Being a framework, if any new technology comes into the market and if it support integration with that framework, then we can easily adopt to any technology and we can get all the new technologies into your project and even after including all those technologies into your project still they are maintainable still they are maintainable this was missing with struts so mostly it used to deal with tag lifts as well as the other uh, very limited set of frameworks but Compared to Spring, we cannot compare both because we cannot compare with respect to performance or with, we cannot compare with respect to the number of uh, integrations it has. Okay, Struts is very good till some extent, but if you are going beyond enterprise level application, preferable is Spring. Okay, next. So Spring, uh, it will come with it, 
its own container that we will uh, we will talk about in our uh, next slides. So usually, if you are aware of servlets and JSPs, so what we will do in servlets and JSPs, if you if we develop a web application using servlets and JSPs, we need a web container which is assumed Tomcat and we need a servlet container because web container already has that. So in order to deal with servlets and JSPs, we need to have a web server and along with it has to have a servlet container. Okay, so if you, uh, if you want to perform uh, any request on your web application, so your container should be up and running and if you do any modifications to your piece of code, then your uh, web server has to be restarted. Okay, next. In case of Spring, we have two paths. The first path is we can use Spring framework for developing core Java applications where we do not require any container and we can use Spring for developing web applications. So in order to leverage the web uh, technologies like uh, request response and all, so we need a web server or an application server, but creation of beans and manipulation of beans and mapping the request and everything will be done using the configuration files with the support of IOC container. So we will see more in coming slides. Java frameworks. In Java technology, there are so many frameworks that help the programmers to build complex applications easily. We can choose these frameworks for building our applications. For example, Hibernate we can use for database access mechanism. So basically, Hibernate is on top of a concept called ORM, Object Relational Mapping. Okay, so with the concept of ORM, what is the ultimate goal that we are achieving? We can talk to POJOs instead of firing SQL queries with respect to each database. So when we can map our class with a relation at relational database management system. So from then we can directly speak to POJO rather than speaking to the underlying relation. So with this change of database we can do on the fly with minimal changes. Okay. Next, struts. As you know, we use struts framework for web application development. EJBs, services like transaction security and messaging. Uh, EJB has the inbuilt support for all this stuff. So that, that is why EJB was very famous. But nowadays, uh, the, with the speed the spring is growing, uh, I can I could say that EJBs is uh, outdated uh, because of the performance reasons also uh, that was decided. And the log4j, uh, you might be knowing about it or not. I'll tell you. So log4j is a framework for logging. What is the importance of logging? So using logging, many a times a developer can no, for example, if an exception occurs during uh, while you are accessing any of the resource on your web application, so you can directly go to the logs and you can verify what exactly went wrong. You cannot ask the user. You can ask the user to reproduce the step, uh, reproduce the problem uh, by asking the steps to reproduce it. But using logs only, you can verify where exactly it went wrong and you can rectify that. Uh, let us talk about a problem. Applications that use these varied frameworks and services become difficult to maintain as it grows including testing effort. So what is the need? Applications that use a number of frameworks and the services have to remain maintainable. Yes, when it has an integration layer with 
all the services, then it is maintainable. Codes should be loosely coupled with the frameworks so that testing and reusability becomes easy. So this is where dependency injection comes. So whatever the dependent classes are there, we will not be initializing those along with the code which is using them, rather we will inject them. Okay, so that it is completely decoupled and it is very easy to write JUnit test cases for those. So what do you mean by what, what I mean by JUnit test cases? JUnit is a unit testing framework for Java where using which you can test a piece of code, a unit of code, whether it is working as expectedly or not by passing the uh, passing some inputs and you can expect the output also. So when your input and output results uh, as per your expectation, then, then that piece of code is working. So that is how your JUnit framework evaluates your unit of code. Next, Spring Framework provides a lightweight solution to develop maintainable and reusable enterprise applications. So what is this lightweight? We will talk about. It provides very simple and rich facilities to integrate various frameworks, technologies and services in the application. So as I already covered, so we can integrate n number of services along with your Spring as it has an integration layer. So it would be very easy to maintain. Next, Spring simplifies Java development. How? To back up its attack on Java complexity, Spring employs four key strategies. Lightweight and minimally invasive development with plain old Java objects. We usually call them as OJOS. OJOS means a class with some attributes or some data members associated with either constructors or setter and getter methods and which will not extend or implement any of the framework related classes or interfaces. That is what we call a plain old Java object. Loose coupling through dependency injection and interface orientation. What does it mean? So for example, for example, I have a user as well as I have a car class. So based on user's specification, a car has to be built and that object of that car has to be returned. But if I write that piece of code along with user, then it is tightly coupled. Instead, what I could do is I can pass user requirements Okay, so this what we call the creation of car object can be outsourced to the IOC container so that user will be having a user as a class will have a setter method for which container will provide an instance of car. So here car is an interface and i10, BMW, uh, i20, and all these are implementation of car interface. So now user as a class will have only interfaces which will be injected by the container. What I was talking about. Let us hold for a second now. Yeah. I have a class user. Okay. And I have a interface car. So usually based on user's preferences, I would be creating an instance of car within the user class itself. What I mean, for example, void build a car, it's a method assume so which will contain car instance and here I would say that car equal to new 
for example i20 and car dot whatever the associated methods okay so i would be setting info related to i20 here okay so this is how usually we can think of a user and a car instances but here as the installation or as the initialization or the creation of car object is done inside user object what does it mean now user and car are tightly coupled and the this logic i no need to worry about right for example somebody is developing a car interface in your team and somebody is developing a user class so what in order to do the parallel development one can focus on interface development and one can focus on class development and one can say that boss assume you will be providing a instance of car with that assumption go with your business logic so if that is a contract then being a developer of class user he is no need to worry about what how exactly car instance is created and what are the properties associated with that car this is abstracted out of the user class developer okay so how this can be achieved this can be achieved in this way for example instead of this i would be having a setter method for example void set car and here it would be having an instance of car so here i would use this dot car equal to car okay and here i no need to initialize my car instance instead as this setter method is being invoked by some third party in our case it is a container which is supplying me the expected instance of car so the instance could be for example class i20 implements car interface so it could be an instance of i20 or it could be an instance of bmw or it could be anything else okay so this would be configuration driven okay so because of this approach now car is loosely coupled with user okay so because of i am not creating an instance of car inside user we will have some other slides on the same topic we will focus more yeah very good so we have few questions from vijay vijay says is it also true in production environment that we do not need to install web application server yeah so in order to leverage the web features we need to have a web container so uh, i as i said in one of our slides there are two paths when you are developing core java application using spring framework you do not require to have any web app, web server or application server but when you are developing a web application using spring framework there you require a web server or application server but the instance the creation of objects are done by ioc container only not by your servlet container that difference you need to understand usually the instances of servlets would be created by your servlet container right in in your web application but here the instances of beans would be created and injected by an ioc container okay so here also in web application also as if you want to qualify your application as web so it has to be deployed in any of the web server or application server but the creation and 
uh, what we call injection logic is no way dependent on your web server or app server that will be taken care by an inbuilt container we call it as IOC container we will talk about IOC container then you will be cleared about it yeah and Vijay also says that so so far whatever we discussed like uh, that has to be injected so can't we achieve this factory pattern so some of you might be uh, knowing about factory pattern so what Vijay is talking about is for example for example I would be having I would be having a class with a method called get a car instance which accepts which accepts a string if you pass i20 as the value then it will create an instance of i20 implementation and it will return that object so we were talking more of this right so that is what which is question but here we have there is a difference here you need to call that factory method to give you the instance but in IOC you no need to call it will be injected without you call it that is what inversion so we are moving in a reverse direction right usually you have to call to get something here you you don't call we will call that is what IOC so when you configure it it will be injected without you call it so that is the difference between your factories and IOC and the other difference would be you will be end up in developing factory classes as and when you need so again this is a non-functional requirement right so we can develop a factory pattern but if you need to develop it you need to develop it for a number of cases again it is a non-functional requirement which you you are getting it from your spring framework okay next so this loose coupling through dependency injection and interface orientation declarative programming through aspects and common conventions so what is this aspect and all we have few other slides I will discuss at that time then boilerplate reduction through aspects and templates so basically the uh, last two points are talking about AOP aspect oriented programming which targets is uh, which targets at cross-cutting concerns what I mean by cross-cutting concerns logging could be a cross-cutting concern security could be a cross-cutting concern transaction management and applying business rules and uh, there are so many other cross-cutting concerns you can think of with respect to an application development so all these cross-cutting concerns can be addressed using AOP can we have a basic example to understand this sure for example I have a class some hello and it has a method called void say hello now I want to calculate the time taken by this method to execute this piece of code so what I can do I can write I can collect the start time here and I can take that end time here and I can calculate it by end time minus start time okay so this is my logic assume I can go for so in this case if I want to perform this activity for all the methods in my application in all my classes then you have to write this logic in all the methods right so what I can treat now is I can extract I can extract this as a concern 
out of my method and I can write it only one time and I can say that boss execute this piece of code just when I enter into a method and execute this piece of code just before when I exit from a method. So if you write this logic in as a concern or as an aspect, then this can be applicable to all your methods across all your classes. So this is what I feel it as a cross-cutting concern. I don't need to repeat the logic. I can write it for one time and which can be executed on demand. So when a method is entered, that piece of code will be executed as I have configured it. Got my point? So this is what we achieve using AOP, Aspect Oriented Programming. Next, Spring features are uh, Spring featured modules. So basically it's a collection of modules from a Spring framework. So there we have different modules. We will talk about more when we talk about Spring architecture. And here is a brief introduction of those. Inversion of control done through dependency injection. Okay, what is loose coupling? What is inversion of control? So inversion of loose coupling we have already seen with user and car example. And inversion of control we will be seeing with, we will be configuring beans in XML file and we can get a bean from that XML file which will be injected with all its dependencies. Okay, that we will see. Aspect oriented programming which enables implementing cross-cutting concerns, the example that we covered just now, and the data access which works with JDBC and Hibernate. We have Spring DAO and we have Spring Batch and we have a JDBC template. There are so many other stuff which, uh, which offers data access. Model view controller, this is very important, MVC framework which provides MVC support through servlets and struts. This is web framework. Remote access framework which supports remote access through RMI, a web service through SOAP and REST. So here, what is RMI? Remote method invocation. What does it mean? Assume there are two. I am putting it in very simple terms. I am not going into uh, deeper uh, deeper what we call levels in I don't want to confuse you in very simple terms we can think of RMI as for example I have a method which is in J, uh, JVM uh, JRE, what we call in one JVM and I have another method in JVM2 if the method which is in JVM2, if it want to call or invoke method which is available in JVM1, that can be possible using RMI. That can be possible using RMI. So that is what RMI and we have a module with respect to RMI that is remote access framework and Spring has inbuilt support of web services also as you know. Next, SOAP stands for Simple uh, Object Access Protocol and the rest stands for, uh, wait a moment, okay, rest stands for Representational State Protocol. Next, uh, yeah. Then we have a remote management module. JMX is the technology that is used to manage the system objects and devices like printers. JMX stands for Java Management Extensions. Usually you can treat 
your network printer as an object, as a Java object, and you can monitor your printer through Java using JMX. And that is an example. There are so many other things that can be achieved using JMX. For example, if you want to have a control on your JVM, that you can use, uh, that can that you can have by JMX enforced on your JVM. You can monitor your JVM how it exactly working. Messaging uses JMS to communicate through message queues. JMS stands for Java Messaging Service. So here uh, the messaging could be synchronous and asynchronous. Testing uh, supports classes for writing unit test cases and integration test cases. So we have Spring unit testing module also. So which offers different classes and interfaces which uh, what we call which gives better unit testing and integration testing capabilities. Then we have Spring Roo which offers convention over configuration. It is like a framework which eases the development effort. This is rapid application development tool. So for example, if you want to create a Spring project, so if you have this kind of IDE, it is a matter of selecting file new Spring project. So it eases the development effort. That is what uh, we can achieve using Spring Roo. Authentication and authorization. So this is uh, covered as part of your Spring Security module. Okay, next. Uh, guys, what is the difference between authentication and authorization? So authentication talks about validating a user and authorization talks about what user is accessible to. There, there would be hundreds of features but is the logged in user is authorized to all of them or some of them and we got replaced from others also Unit says authentication means uh, you are an authorized user and authorization means you have right to perform some action yes uh, see who says authentication uh, is if the user can log into system that is true and authorization means the permission to this system for a user if the user is read only or read write yeah it's more or less whether the logged in user is accessible to this feature or this module or not it is something like that and the Srujana says authentication is who you are and authorization is what you are allowed to do <laughs> Very nice. So, in very simple terms, uh, as Srujana said, authentication is who you are and uh, authorization is what you are allowed to do. Very good. Yeah. So, this is uh, what we call Spring Architecture. If you see here, on a higher level, it is Spring Framework Runtime and which contains different modules in it. So here, all these modules pertain to data access and integration and all these modules pertain to web, MVC and remoting and this is AOP aspects and instrumentation and the core container of Spring Framework consists of these modules. They are beans, then core, then context and expression language. So in our first example, we'll be dealing with these three modules. One is beans, second one is core, the third one is context. Please do remember, we will come back when we develop our first spring application. All these are modules. And the test is the module which, uh, which corresponds to that JUnit as, uh, sorry, unit testing and integration testing enabler. Okay, so here let us go one by one. JDBC stands for Java Database Connectivity, which 
enables a Java application to talk to underlying relational database management system. So basically JDBC provides an API to talk to any RTBMS. ORM as we discussed earlier, it stands for Object Relational Mapping. Basically, we map our POJOs with relations in relational database management system. A relation is nothing but a table. So after the mapping is done, so being from Java application, we will not be talking to database directly, rather we will be talking to POJOs. They know how to talk to the underlying table. That is what ORM all about. Then OXM as we discussed object to XML. Sorry, we did not discuss it. Okay. Uh, we discussed about JXM but not OXM. OXM stands for object to XML mapping. So it has two phases. One is marshalling and another is unmarshalling. Marshalling means it will convert up an object, so an XML to object, XML document to an object representation and unmarshalling means an object representation to a XML. So this is with respect to that. And uh, JMS stands for Java Messaging Service as we have already discussed. So it, it has two, two kind of messaging, one is synchronous and asynchronous. So for example, in order to understand what is this synchronous and asynchronous is, when you uh, dial to a number and the opponent, uh, sorry, the destination, if they attend your call and when you start speaking, that is synchronous communication. When you leave a message, a text message, that it reaches the destination and it can be read by the uh, destination at any point of time. Not exactly the time when it, it is received by the destination. Okay, so that is what we call asynchronous. So those two kinds of messaging will be available using JMS. Transactions. What is a transaction? A transaction, for example, if you are aware, mostly you will be aware of ATMs. So when you insert your debit card, it will be asking your PIN. After you enter your PIN, it will be asking for you, uh, what kind of activity that you would like to perform. For example, I want to withdraw some money. So I have selected withdraw operation. So it will ask for enter the amount then you will be providing the required amount. That means that figure you will type. Then it will say, I am processing. Please be here to collect your money. So what, what is this? This is a transaction. This is a transaction. Okay. So transaction is nothing but basically in terms of RDBMS, it has to follow AC rules. Atomicity, consistency, integrity, as well as durability. Okay, so it has to satisfy all these in order to fulfill a transaction. So, transaction management is altogether a separate topic and which is given in the form of a module with respect to Spring Framework. Next, so all these stuff, all these modules will belong to a layer called data access or integration. Next, web layer contains Spring Web, Spring support with servlets and Spring support to portlets and Spring support or integration with the struts. Okay, for example, if I have a project which is already developed in struts, and which you want to integrate it with Spring that we call as Spring Web. So Spring Web module is correspond to that. And we have a concept called Spring MVC where we use servlets. So that is what we call an, a web application developed using Spring is because of Spring MVC only. Okay, and the portlets is a technology 
वेर इट इज नथिंग बट फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू ओपन अ ब्राउजर एंड इट 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 हैज एन एप्लीकेशन करस्पॉन्ड टू एन एंटायर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वेर यू वॉन्ट टू मॉनिटर वट इज हैपनिंग विथ ईच डिपार्टमेंट इन दट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन so there might be different applications that developed for each department but you want to see all of them or you want to see some of them it has to be configurable and it has to be in one place so then what you can do is you can go for portlet development so portlet development what happens in the single page there would be n number of portlets which are configurable and each portlet can be of a different application that means the back end or the back end application could be a different application so that kind of uh, what we call pluggability is also there with spring with portlet integration so usually uh, the famous uh, portlet engine is jbus lifefree next uh, this is about web layer and aop stands for aspect oriented programming and uh, aspects instrumentation aop all these are we talk about this when we talk about aop more okay so the only thing that we need to understand about this is it deals with the uh, aspects or cross cutting concerns or boilerplate concerns next core container so this is core of your spring framework and it is the combination of four modules what are they spring core so uh, spring beans spring context and spring expression language we call it as spring el so if some of you um, aware of jsp's expression language then you will feel at home when we talk about spring expression language if not also no problem we will be covering in depth then this uh, test module corresponds to as i said unit testing as well as integration testing capabilities are available through this test module of your spring framework so basically the thing that you need to understand spring as a framework contains n number of modules based on our requirement we will be configuring those modules to leverage the capabilities provided by the respective modules okay so that is what we need to understand uh punit says jpa is also part of orm right yes correctly Uh, yes, correct, Punit. JPA stands for Java Persistence API. When we talk about persistence, it uh, it is part of data access. You are correct. So this is a high high level diagram which contains n number of other things also. So in internally, your ORM or your JDBC or OXM, it sorry, ORM uses JPA internally for persistence. okay punit says uh, jpa is also part of orm right yes it is part of or orm only because orm internally uses jpa for persistence next yep so here uh, it is talking about the same stuff so what we covered in that slide so i am skipping this slide this is again same web servlet strut portlet yeah so here we can spend some time on talking about aspects and instrumentation because we did not talk about this while talking spring architecture so here aspect this module helps to integrate with aspect j aspect j is another aop framework spring has its own aop framework and aspect j is other framework which 
has AOP capabilities. So we can integrate Aspect J along with the Spring Framework. <coughs> Excuse me. Then instrumentation. So Aspect J uh, usually it, it is annotation driven. So mostly you have to deal with uh, AOP in terms of annotation when we talk about Aspect J. Instrumentation. Instrumentation is the ability to monitor the level of product's performance to diagnose the errors and write the trace information. It is kind of profiling thing so that we can achieve using instrumentation. This testing part we have already covered. Next. Uh, Spring Framework Core Layer, as I have already covered, it contains these four modules and the core. See here, core module, it has dependency, injection and IOC features. So these two are the concepts that we are going to cover. So dependency, injection and IOC, we will cover it through an example so that it will be very clear. I have already covered it using or loose coupling example that is our user and the car example but we will cover with more decent examples beans it implements that means this module implements bean factory through factory pattern so it contains a bean factory interface which is one of the ioc container offered by spring and the context is a module used for application context. So there are two contain two IOC containers are available through Spring Framework. They are Bean Factory and Application Context. So why we use them? So basically these two consume some configuration files like XML and by using the instance of any of this we can get the beans configured in the configuration file. What does it do? It go through that configuration file, it identifies the beans and it identifies the dependencies, it creates all beans and it injects the dependencies when needed and when you say that boss get bean with this ID, it will give the bean created with all its dependencies injected. So that is what the beauty of IOC. Next, so expression language used for querying and manipulating objects at runtime. So for example, when you have a view component, that is for example, you have a JSP page in which you want to uh, fetch the value of a bean, then you can do that using the expression language. Yeah, again, uh, we have this object coupling problem here. So here, not possible to incorporate the changes without refactoring the code. So for example, if I want to change the implementation of car, or if I want to change user objects implementation, so that is tightly coupled. It cannot be scalable or testable in isolation or even maintainable without some degree of code change. So this is what we call maintainability issue because they tightly coupled and while testing while writing unit tests also you need to have object of objects of dependent uh, what we call beans so instead instead if it is what we call dependency injection so you will be having interfaces for which you can use mocked objects mock objects what I mean by mock object? It is nothing but a dummy object and uh, on which you can say that if you call this method on me, then I will re return this. So there are different frameworks in the market like Easy Mock and Mockito, which enables object mocking. So when we use dependency injection and IOC, so your code will be without dependencies. 
so there when you have the dependent object objects are injected through dependency injection but the as the logic of creation of the objects is not associated with your business logic it is very easy to write unit test cases it is very easy to write unit test cases so which improves what we call stable product because of you can write unit test cases for all your classes and methods yeah Puneet says can you repeat what is mocking uh, sure Puneet so what I mean to say is for example if we go back to this see here user as a class it has it has a reference car and I am saying that set car is car so set car is a setter method which is which is expecting an instance of car so here instead of create while unit testing while writing unit tests you no need to create an object of car this is very simple right car it is very simple but what if it is http servlet request so you cannot provide the object of http servlet request right there we will depend on mock objects so mock objects are something like dummy objects we are not initializing any uh, data members there we are not calling the constructor at all we are not invoking any methods on it it is just a dummy object that we can create using mocking frameworks like easy mock or mockito these are the two uh, famous frame mocking frameworks which works very good with JUnit. so here instead of providing see here car is an interface right so you cannot create an object of this right and you cannot provide an implementation for this so in that also you can treat it as a mock object that means a dummy implementation so that is what we call mocking uh, did you understand it Puneet uh, for more information I request you to go through easy mock and mockito frameworks introduction you will get better clarity on it if we want to build good scalable and testable components then coupling is a bad thing that is what we discussed so far so creation of objects should not other creation of dependencies should not be mingled with the business logic it should be injected okay so how can we uh, implement it the client needs a product but instead of creating it directly using the new operator it asks the factory object for a new product providing the information about the type of object it needs so this is the same case I talked about with respect to we have a car manufacturer it is a factory for example if the user asks for i20 it will manufacture i20 car and it will return so if we put it into the classes and objects we have a user class and we have a car factory pattern so which has a method called create car which expects a model detail in the form of a string if user asks for i20 by passing i20 as a string it will create an instance of i20 car which is a class instance of the class i20 so that is what factory works so here what is happening which object will be created and how the object will be created that part is abstracted from your business logic so based on the parameter that you pass the respective object you will get how 
that is completely abstracted away from the business logic. If you see here, I have a product which is an interface and which has a concrete product. That means an implementation to it. Next, client uses a product and asks for a new object. So, when client ask, uh, passes some information to a method called create product, here if we have a string assume, so based on this uh, string, this factory decides which concrete product it has to create. So that will be determined by the input provided by the user. So here the creation of this concrete product is abstracted away from client and it is taken care in factory. So this is what we call factory pattern. So you can go through this URL to know more about factory pattern. Yeah, so here inversion of control container with a dependency injection. So there you are asking for an object by passing some information to factory. But here that means the control is with you. But inversion of control you will not be asking. You will just configure it and it will inject it for you. You no need to call any factory classes method to get an object of some of the implementation. Rather you can configure that I need this. Then that will be injected. That will be injected through the configuration. This is what we call, that means the control is not with you because the creation of dependencies is not with, within your control. Rather, you have outsourced that creation logic to a third party. Here, the third party, we call it as a IOC container. So now, the container is responsible for identifying the dependencies associated with each bin and inject those dependencies when the object is needed. Okay, so that is what we achieve using IOC and dependency injection. So it is the reverse of your factory where you are, you no need to call them, rather it will call and it will inject. But the funda is same as your factory. Next. Inversion of control container, that is, we call it as IOC container and dependency injection. Objects created by the container are also called managed objects or beams because the objects are created by the container and it will have a life cycle associated with it. In such cases, your classes will be treated as beams. So, since the starting of the class, I was talking about beans, beans, beans. What is a bean? It is nothing but an object created by a container. An object created by the container, we call it as managed objects or beans because it will be, those objects will be associated with a life cycle and the entire control on that bean would be with the container itself. Next, the container can be configured by loading XML files or detecting specific Java applications on configuration classes. So there are several ways that your IOC container can consume the configuration. So here, as I said, there are two types of containers we have. One is bean factory and the other is application context. So they can consume the configuration either from the XML documents or from some kind of annotations. We will talk about that more.
central to the spring framework is its inversion of control container which provides a consistent means of configuring and managing java objects the container is responsible for managing object life cycles of specific objects so what is container responsible for creating the objects calling their initialization methods and configuring these objects by wiring them together wiring means injecting or associating yeah spring containers spring has two containers as we covered uh, earlier bean factory container and application container so regarding bean factory it is a basic container all other possible classes that act as containers implement bean factory it is a root container that loads all the beans and provides dependency injection to enterprise applications so it is nothing but there would be one xml file and in that xml file there would be so many tags like beans bean so here the bean tag is corresponds to the configuration related to for example a class called user okay then bean factory as an interface it has different implementations one of the implementation consumes that xml file it go through that xml file it identifies what are the beans those were listed in that xml file and it will create objects related to all those beans and if any of those beans has a dependency with the other beans listed in that xml document it will inject those so that is what the purpose of containers and the source for these containers would be either from xml documents or this is again annotation driven also and bean factory is the basic version and application context it extends or it is a super set of bean factory which gives you better uh, features like it it can deal with message resources like iit and international internationalization and it can deal with what we call different uh, apis altogether so it is advisable to use application context rather bean factory when there is no other compelled reason to go for bean factory so the only reason uh, the only place where we can go with bean factory is uh, when we deal with applets so applets even kilobytes of data also matters with the performance there we will use only bean factory but usually in enterprise applications we use application context as the default or de facto way to ioc container so that is what we call it extends bean factory container with various enterprise level features we will talk about more on application context because from module 1 to module uh, 6 we will be dealing with application context only next bean life cycle so here instantiation of bean populate the properties instantiation means creating the bean by calling its constructor if the constructor is not available assume the constructor is available and with some properties and the populate the properties means uh, in the constructor it will map the properties related to that with the arguments it we passed right that is populating properties then set bean factory or set application context so it is nothing but there are two kinds of injection that we can follow either it is uh, of uh, setter injection or constructor injection we'll talk about it more then is bean is associated with any initialization method which will be executed once the constructor is invoked or once the bean is initialized and then the bean is ready to use and when container is shut down there would be some destroy methods associated with our each bean so those beans 
would be calling the destroy method associated with those once the constructor uh, sorry the container is shut down okay we will see this life cycle throughout all our examples don't worry about it yeah vijay has a question vijay says both containers can deal with xml as well as annotations right yes vijay both can deal with xml as well as annotation we call them as declarative and programmatic <coughs> both supports uh, both the approaches next yeah application context spring comes with several flavors of application context that means application context is an interface and all these are the implementations based on our need we will go for one of the implementation so for example class path xml application context it loads a context that means your xml file definition from an xml file located in the class path treating context definition file as class path resources what does it mean so we are talking about an xml file right so that xml file has to be part of your classes directory or one of the jars under your lib folder then only for your web application it will be on class path okay so in those cases we will go for class path xml application context then file system xml application context for example i am verifying the changes on my local so i can give my local file system path to that particular xml file like c colon slash some edureka slash workspace slash some beans dot xml that path i can provide when i use this implementation like that we have xml web application context which loads context definition from an xml file contained within a web application so it is what we call uh, it is located in web application but not in the class path so we need to go with uh, defining the path from the context root annotation config application context creates the context by loading classes annotated with the predefined annotations so this is what we are talking about annotation based configuration so for example you need to configure this or you need to configure this in uh, one of the xml files to tell that boss i have some classes annotated so please include that configuration along with the declarative configuration so that we can convey using annotation config application context and the annotation config web application context it is as same as that but with respect to web application that's it it is with respect to your standalone application and this is with respect to your web application and these two pertain to annotation driven configuration okay so mostly we will be focusing on file system xml application context at least for today's demo okay uh, yeah spring configuration there are following three important methods to provide configuration metadata to the spring container so here xml based configuration file that we know annotation based configuration file which is introduced from spring 2.5 and a java based configuration file which we which is introduced from spring 3.0 so what is the difference between uh, second and the third so second uh, actually contains the standards of jsr 250 and the java based configuration file contains the standards of jsr 330 so what is this jsr uh, so usually the standards related to your java will be given as jsr with followed by the number okay so the basic thing that you need to understand about these uh, two are uh, 
few of the annotations are introduced in 2.5 that is annotation based and few other annotations are introduced in java based configuration that is 3.0 those annotations are based on the specifications were listed in jsr 250 and jsr 330 don't worry about what is this jsr and what is this jsr 250 and jsr 330 when you go into deeper then you will understand more Next, so Eclipse is an integrated development environment environment which we use for our application development. So, if you go through the documents which you can find in LMS as I said, so if you go here, we have two documents, installing Eclipse, so here it talks about installing Eclipse version Luna that is the latest <coughs> and it talks about uh, and it also talks about how to uh, get the dependent jars okay and this talks about how to create our spring fray, uh, first spring project okay so th the steps are up to date I have followed the same steps and I was successful okay I request you to follow the same <coughs> Okay, assume Eclipse installation is done and uh, Spring IDE installation is done, that is a plugin. So usually, a small introduction on how to uh, install plugins using Eclipse. So if you go here, Eclipse Marketplace and you can search for required plugins. So basically Eclipse is uh, what we call Eclipse works on top of plugins and features. So those you can download from marketplace. So here I can search for Spring IDE. So that is what is illustrated in the documents. Okay, it's still searching for it. Yeah. So for example, this is Spring IDE 3.6.3 release. And when you say uh, I have already installed it that is why this update button as there are no update buttons it is disabled and it is asking for uninstall okay so like that you have to install spring IDE basically it talks about there are so many things are available for you for free for example I want to create a new spring project that you can do because of this plugin I want to create a beam configuration file an xml file basically with some uh, and it should contain the doc tape and all added to it so that again is uh, possible using one of the uh, spring ide components so when you install this you will get additional feature or additional benefits with your luna that is your eclipse latest version okay so let me create a project from scratch so I have created two. Let me create a third project. So here I am using Maven to create a project. What is um, what is Maven? So in simple terms, you can think Maven as build management tool or project management tool. Okay, and Maven can work based on the pom.xml pom stands for project object model and it is an xml file okay we will see so when we create then you will be in comfort zone file new go to other and go to maven if you type maven and uh, there are several things listed out under maven i am interested in maven, pro maven project click next uh, check the create a simple project by skipping archetype selection because otherwise it will ask you which archetype you want to select for creating this project so that is not required at this stage say next give the group id so usually it is your company along with your business unit uh, detail so i will say company edureka 
Java. Uh, let me call it as Spring. Artifact ID is nothing but your project ID or project name. I will tell. Uh, I will name it as Third Spring App. You can name it anything. You can name it anything here. Okay. I'll say finish. Uh, creating project here you can see the progress and the building is also done and if you go here yeah if you go to this markers view see it says some build the path problem so how to resolve these problems just right click on this go to build path go to configure build path and if you see here it is going with j2 se 1.5 so but uh, the complaint version would be 1.7 so i would say 1.7 here by editing it if you do this see now those two problems are resolved okay now we do not have any problems or we do not have any warnings okay next if you see the project structure here this is the default project structure okay and if you see here uh, these are the jars which are uh, pertaining to java ac 1.7 that is your runtime environment okay so if you see here this is where my java is installed it is java 7 okay and all these are related to your java runtime environment and I have a tab called Maven dependencies also, but as of now, I do not have any dependencies under each. Next, I have source, main, and so the project structure is something like this. And I was talking about pom.xml, right? So this is what I was talking about. Okay, so here, here. If you go to, if you go to pond.xml, see here, these are the details that we have provided while, these are the details while we have provided while creating our project. So, in the root of the project, we will be having an XML file with the name pond.xml, which Maven is interested because it starts, it's processing from pond.xml only. So what you want to convey to Maven, you should convey that in pom.xml. And each and every pom will be inherited from a super pom. A super pom with some default configurations. So usually if you click on this effective pom tab, it will show you a big list. A big list. So this list is because of the combination of super pom plus the pom with respect to your project so whenever you are developing any maven project you need to be very clear that the configurations given by you will be associated with the super pom configurations along with your project specific configurations that is how so this is the pom that will be considered by your maven build tool to build your project not this because effective form is a combination of this as well as super form so this is the form that will be considered by your maven for building your application building your project okay form stands for project object model okay next why we use this in a moment we will come to know so now how our application specific form looks something like this next thing is right click on the project go to new create a class i will name it as hello world and i will give a package also co.edureka.demo okay click finish you have a class created then i would say public void say hello next 
if you want to write system dot out dot println instead of typing everything you could say sys out control space okay the shortcut for system dot out dot println is sys out control space okay here i could say anything but i am interested at hello world now i have a bean oh, sorry now i have a class with me if i want to create an object of hello world i do not want to create it with the new hello world rather i want it to be created by the spring container but in order to be spring in action we need at least three modules right the core modules what are they spring core spring beans and spring context so let us add those modules those modules into our application how we can do that go to pom.xml if you see here you have a tab called dependencies click on this if you go to uh, if you see uh, you can see an add button here click on add button and you can search for dependencies boss i'm really not sure what to search for because i really do not know the artifact id so what i can do so if you go here effective pom you will be having a repository this is the default maven repository if you go here see it says go to this url because that is not for accessing purpose so type spring and org is org dot spring framework is the official site which offers us all the related jars so see this is the artifact id see this is the artifact id column that you need to use that you need to use to get the respective associated jars for example what i was in need i was in need of spring beans then spring context and spring core so this is if you see it looks something like this spring hyphen bean spring hyphen test uh, spring hyphen context spring hyphen core okay and group id is org dot spring framework so come back come back go to dependencies see here in pom.xml nothing is added click on add and search for spring core uh, usually it will provide you the list if not again uh, do it yeah it has provided you the list so here from this i will choose org dot spring framework that was the official site i was talking about right see org dot spring framework and the uh, this is group id and this is artifact id so i will choose the latest version that is 4.1.4 it has the other versions also see versioning everything is automated now i will go with 4.1.4 of artifact id spring core say okay next add spring context from the same group id that is org spring framework and the artifact id is spring context i am selecting the latest version again and the other one is spring beans again from the official site that is org dot spring framework spring beans got it and see here this is still empty and if you see here an asterisk is appended what does it mean boss this file is not saved save it i could say control s when you say when you save it the dependent 
or the dependencies will be added. What does it mean? If you go here, see, all the dependent jars are available for you. You no need to search anywhere. You no need to download anything. It will come free for you by just following the steps. So, these the three modules require these many jars. Okay. So, now my Spring Framework is with me in the form of respective modules. So, now I have three modules with me which has seven jars altogether. Okay. Next, I am ready with this. Now, I want to have a bean configuration file. Okay. So, right click on this go to new and go to other you can select bean and you could say spring bean configuration file see here okay so this you got because of you have installed spring ide plugin otherwise it will not come for free so you have to install spring ide plugin from eclipse marketplace which is an open source okay Otherwise, you won't see that folder structure. Okay, in third spring application and name. I could give any name, but I will I will say beans as my name. See here, just see here. Finish. See now an XML file with the beans.xml is added with the default schema. Default schema and namespaces okay this is what we require now it is a good time to create or to create a bean for this class to create a bean for this class now see how it looks if you go here see it looks something like this right but when you create a bean it looks something like this and s is added to uh, identify or to indicate that it is a spring bean see here and s is added for icon it's for visual purpose next go to beans you don't need to write anything everything just to, you need to provide the values if you click on this beans tab you have a button called a new bean if you click on this it will ask for the ID. So, what is the name or ID you want to give for your Hello World class? I would say Hello World. What is the class name? So, it is Hello World, which is in third spring application. Okay, I have three uh, Hello World classes, but I am interested in Hello World of third, third spring application. I do not have any parent because it is not extending from any other class. Say next. And you do not have any properties to set. So I will say finish. And again asterisk has come here. Appended here. Control S. Go back to your source. See. This line is added now. Okay. So the bean configuration is done. Which contains beans as the root for your XML uh, as a root element and it can contain a number of beans in it a number of beans in it now bean is ready now i want an instance of this hello world i want an instance of this hello world so let us create a test class to test whether so far we did not create our container yet Okay, you will create the container now. You will go to class. I would say test. If you check this, public static void main will be added to it. But I won't check. Rather, I would show you a shortcut. Say main control space. It asks for main method. Double click on it. Main method will be added for you. Okay next so how what are the containers we know one is bean factory and one is application context so throughout our course we will be talking about only application context so one of the implementation of application context is 
new file system xml application context which expects a string okay next import this how to import classes the shortcut is control shift o it will import the respective classes and interfaces if they are available on the class path control shift o see i have this class located in org spring framework context module so if you go to the dependencies if you go to maven dependencies and if you go to uh, where is context spring context go to the folder structure org spring framework context support yeah we are talking about this in this we have a class called file system xml application context here it is so now we are talking about this class okay this is our container and we need to pass the configuration file name so that is beans.xml i would say beans.xml okay so i could say context equals to okay save it next statement now my container is ready with this statement from the container if you want to search for a bean which is available in this context file how to do that using this context reference you could call it is it has so many methods but we are interested at get bean you can use either this or this what are the advantage of using this or what are the advantage of using this we will see in a moment i will go with this so here you need to pass the dot class so which class i am looking at i am looking at hello world right so i would say hello world dot class which returns me an instance of hello world okay now object is created did they use a new operator did they use new operator no i did not so who is creating object for me my container that is context from the context it is creating an object of my being so here i would say hello dot say hello when you save it and it is a best good practice see here it, it it wants that there is a resource link because we are we are establishing some file io here right input output so it is our responsibility to close that so i could say context dot close now the warning is gone just right click boss i did not understand from this instead of what i will do is i will use this id okay that would be more intuitive for us for our first example okay yeah and you need to type cast it to hello world both are same but uh, this is the yeah that's it see here context context is associated with what file beans.xml file and from that context what you are looking at you are looking at a bean with the id hello world so go to beans.xml and search for the bean with the id hello world yes i got one then it is corresponds to which class hello world class which is located in code.edureka.demo okay in this case i am expecting an object of this class is created and returned for me and returned for me okay yes 
and assume the object is written as expected then I am invoking say hello method using the reference of hello world and I am closing the context what does it mean I am closing the container that means I am destroying the application context container how to run this you can directly click on this or go to run run as java application see hello world this is what we have in say hello if you go there hello world so is that what it got printed or not all this stuff is related to your container initialization and your container destruction okay so this is what we expected so here the dependency injection is not yet done the only thing is the only thing that is done is creation of object okay how to insert dependencies and all we did not cover it <clears throat> so far is it clear any doubts Yeah, we already have some doubts. Yeah, uh, CDK says that uh, will we be using Spring Suite? Uh, no, CDK, we will be using Eclipse IDE with Spring IDE as a plugin along with Maven. That is a production level standard. <coughs> And see who says, uh, will you have any Maven introduction documentation for me to learn? Just wonder. Uh, see who we do not have that yet, but uh, I can provide you some uh, <coughs> introductory documentation tomorrow if you wish. So our core concept is to learn Spring, but we, as we are also using uh, Maven, I will give some points to you tomorrow. Is that fine? If not, uh, we have a website called, uh, what is that, Tutorial, Tutorials Point, where you can find the decent introduction of it. Uh, let me show you that. Why you want, why you have to wait for me till tomorrow. If you go there. Here you can search for Maven and Tutorials point yeah see so here it will talk about the decent overview as well as the in-depth knowledge till how to use it in IDEs also uh, will this be helpful to you yeah see who says yes thank you see who and uh, we have other couple of questions from Vijay. I am not able to correlate Maven with Spring. Please explain. So Vijay says, can't we directly create Spring project? If yes, what is the benefit to create Maven project? The benefit here is if you want to change the dependencies, you no need to search for any. For example, if you go here, you can create the pro spring project by using your eclipse by selecting java uh, new java project by adding all the dependent jars to the build path that is one way that you can do that but this is the production level standard that we are trying to adhere from the class one okay so basically as we are dealing with very simple programs this does not sound good for you at this moment by using maven but the thing is for example the product for which i am working currently it has 120 maven modules 120 maven modules imagine so the maintenance of 120 modules you cannot achieve you can achieve by your own but you need to work hard for it but if you outsource that maintenance work to your maven that will come free for you 
Okay, for example, I have a release one now and I have release two tomorrow. So, so, so sorry, release two after three months. But if I want to roll back to release one, so I no need to search for any uh, where I kept all the jars and all. Just change the version number. It will give, it will download all the dependent modules for you. That is the beauty of Maven. You no need to keep track of all that. While creating the project itself, you are creating with the version details. As I have selected 4.1.4. So if I want to go for 3.1.4, I can go just by changing the version detail. That's it. So that is why we are going for Maven. Because we are outsourcing our build, project build management to Maven. Otherwise, we can also do it. It is as same as writing your web application using servlets and JSP. But why we are going for framework? Because many things will come for free. So again, Maven, going for Maven also, many are things related to your build management will come for free. That is the reason we are going for Maven. Otherwise, I could have created a core Java project and I can create an XML file and I can add all these seven jars. What you can see now, all these seven jars to the build path. Then it is as same as this. Yes or no? But, but if you right click on this, go to Maven, see I have something related to this. I can update the project and I can disable some Maven goals. So it is altogether a new topic. Uh, I, I don't want to discuss that uh, for our first application at least because that will deviate our topic. Okay. So there are so many other things that we can achieve using Maven. It is a build management tool. And for example, if you go to beans.xml, you can see, sorry, your pom.xml. Where is that? Yeah. You go to pom.xml, see these dependencies were added, right? So if I want boss, 4.1.4 is error prone. I don't want to go with it. I, I want to roll back to 4.1.3. Just change this. And change the other files. That's it. If you say, you will find all the dependent jars with respect to the version you specified here. Got my point? So, can you do this by... Can we do this by our own? We can do that. But we have to go to the respective Maven site and we have to search for the respective dependencies. And not all the time it will come with these dependencies like commons logging and AOP alliances and uh, what we call expression. So this we have to download separate. They will not come together. But as the dependencies were configured in Maven, so it knows what are the dependent jars also. So it is downloading those jars also for you. So you don't need to search for any other dependent jars. You don't you just need to specify the artifact IDs. This is with respect to third party. But with respect to your own project, your project might contain a number of modules. For example, my project contains 120 modules. This is a fact. So that is how our production level projects looks like. So 120 modules, in order to maintain them, it is very difficult without a build management tool. We need to have a build management tool, which tells us, well, so and so module, so and so test case is failing. That means there is a regression cost that you can know that you can know by using Maven. So building process, whatever the phases it involves, all will be addressed using Maven. I think you got some decent introduction on Maven now. Yeah, Vijay says, got it, thanks. Next. Yeah. 
Uh, guys, uh, did you understand our first example? If so, uh, let us, uh, uh, we will move to the second example. Yeah, uh, Vijay has a question. Uh, boss, we did not install Maven, right? How did we get it? And he even says that, does Maven comes default with Eclipse Luna? The answer is yes. Maven comes by default with the Eclipse Luna version. That is why we are going with Luna. Otherwise, we have to install Maven as one of the plugin from Eclipse Marketplace. That is how the second approach. Yes, and even in the documentation, it is clearly mentioned when, when you go through the documentation, right? So there it is clearly mentioned that Maven is part of Luna. That is why we are going with it because uh, I, I had shown you these two, right? In this, it is uh, clearly mentioned. So after the completion of class, I request all of you to please follow these two documents step by step to create our first project okay next we are done with our first example now did you understand inversion of control that means the creation of object is not controlled by you rather than it is controlled by a third party that is what we call a container so that is how we got a object of hello world but why we are typecasting it here because this get bin will return an object of type object so we are converting it to the respective object now instead if you were pom.xml sorry if you were beans.xml has only one bean configured with respect to that hello world class then i could say that instead this i would use hello world dot class so here this is not required because you are explicit you are clearly saying that boss get me an object of this so no type testing is required this is the advantage of going with this notation otherwise the first notation will also work because i might i might i might use two beans with different ids for example, I could say hello world one. So if I say hello world dot class, it will be confused, right? So in that case, going with ID is preferred. Okay. Next. And the other navigation steps I would like to tell you is when you type bean space, do control space again, it will give you all the attributes correspond to that bean all the attributes corresponds to that bean okay so like this you have to explore next Okay, now let us talk about this example. Person with two properties. Okay, I have a class called person with two properties in it. Okay, so I am not typing this example because I have already that example type in me. So if you go to, I am closing spring, third spring app. Go to module 1. Here you can find person.class. String, string first name and string last name. These are the two attributes I want to deal with. Okay. And see, uh, I will show you some, uh, some stuff related to how to get all these uh, setter methods and how to get this two string implementation for free. You don't need to type. So for that, let us create a person class here. This is just to two. Uh, in, increase your development uh, what we call boost your development time so person is a class so how I am developing please concentrate private 
string first name private string last name okay i have two attributes and i want to have setter methods don't write setter methods by your own it is not advisable you will miss you will do some or the other spell mistakes instead just just right click on this just what am i doing i'm just right clicking go to source go to generate getters and setters okay okay yeah select this right click on it go to source go to generate getters and setters see it is asking for with respect to this attribute it has getter and setter with respect to this attribute it has getter and setters i do not want getter methods i want only setter methods you could do select setters see checkbox is uh, enabled and uh, where you want to insert it after the last member in that class and uh, keep the access modifier as public finish see two setter methods are created for you and still these are not yet used anywhere that is what it is saying value of the field person first name is not used so let us have a two string implementation for this right click go to source go to generate two string it is it has already selected okay i will go with these two strings and it has to be inserted i would say after set last name method then you can even say in two string implementation skip the null values if any but i don't i am not going with it and i say okay see two string implementation is also provided for you so what does it mean so when you say assume you have created person p equal to new person when you say p dot two string this will be invoked as you know and it contains the values that we have provided to you, provided to that person class along with the attribute names okay i did not write even single line of code other than this properties <coughs> think of a class with 100 attributes in it see it is a matter of select all go to right click go to source and generate setters and getters that's it so this is again another shortcut for you okay but i have already done this before so it looks something like this you no need to type anything and now i want to configure it so go to beans.xml see here this is my person bean so here this is the class for which i want to create a bean that is the name or the id i am giving it as person this could be anything and see here property is an element we use to provide the values for each and every attribute or for each and every data member so see here i have two data members right so if just delete this if you say control space it will give you you no need to type anything that is what the beauty of id first name got it and it has listed only with respect to this class that is the beauty of your id okay so for first name i am giving the value as pramod and for last name i am giving the value as kumar so this is my bean configuration got it so what does it mean it will create a new person and it will call set for example this is equals to this is equals to person p equal to new person p dot set first name pramod and p dot set last name kumar return p so this is what we achieved using this got it next so let us have a 
test class for us. So I am, I have test class also ready with me. I am commenting out this piece of code. Select the piece of code and say control followed by forward slash. So what is forward slash? Uh, let me show you. This I am talking about. This slash I am talking about. Okay. Control forward by forward slash will comment the selected piece of code. I don't want this and I don't want all of this. Okay. Now I have this with me. Got it? So I have created the context and I have the person class which is uh, defined in my bean configuration file and using this context I have got an, in, a reference to person object on which I am invoking to string. See when you right click, sorry, yeah, right click run as Java application. See. Okay, so th that is because of some other configuration because your uh, beans dot uh, XML has so many other beans, right? So don't worry about that. Just to concentrate on this line. <coughs> Two string representation. See, first name is equal to Pramod and last name is equal to Kumar. Okay, so what is the injection concept here? If you go to beans dot XML, string is a class. Okay, so yeah, we did not in uh, what we call we did not deal with injected uh, inject dependency injection yet. This is just assigning the values, right? For example, as of now, we have dealt with only one class with some properties. Okay, next, let us go to our module. Yeah. So here if you see XML based configuration spring beans can be configured in XML files with any name and can be stored anywhere in the class bar that we covered and we know this is how our configuration looks like and this is application context.xml file so as we have given the name as beans.xml we could give it as any name okay and with the, we have defined person bean with id bean1 that is what we are talking about here for this bean we have set its first name property to Craig and last name property to watson as shown in this image you can define any number of beans and name your xml file whatever you want so that is what we have seen we had this we had defined more than one bean and we had named it as beans.xml instead of application context yeah there are attributes associated to bean tag so id or name so defines the name of the bean you can qualify it as id or you can qualify it as name okay what I mean to say is bean space id equal to something or name equal to something. You can define anything. You can use either id or name attribute with respect to, with bean to give a name to that bean. Class is nothing but for which class you are creating a bean. Init method, destroy method we will see at the end of this module. We have the decent examples also on this. Scope also we scope is the last concept of our uh, session. Lazy init. It is to tell that usually this lazy init property is set to false. What does it mean? Boss, create the bean as the container loads. That's it. When the container has started, load all beans. That means create all beans for me. That is said using the property called lazy init set to false but when you say lazy init set to true the bean will not be created until you use it until you use it that means 
it will not be created once the container is up rather than it will be created when you use it for the first time that is how that will be decided by your lazy init property property we have seen it is to set or give the value to the property that means i have a data member for that member if i want to provide some value i have to use property element constructor arc there are two ways using which we can inject inject other beans or inject values we will see in the next slide that is one is setter injection and the other is dependency injection so so far without knowing to us we have followed setter injection how we had set first name last name values using setter methods only right for example one thing you need to be noted here for example for example go to person class and remove this and go to beans.xml see what it says no setter found for property first name in class person what does it mean we are using setter injection here yes or no this is the proof of that that means it is using setter methods to set the values for that bean this is what we call injecting values using setter methods so we had injected some strings using setter injection okay i would say control z when you save it there won't be any errors okay next lab we had seen the lab and uh, yeah as i was saying types of dependency injection supported by spring there are two one is setter method dependency injection we had seen this practically that is using setter methods a uh, container is able to set the value to the bean and the other is constructor dependency injection where your container uses the respective constructor to inject the values the respective constructors to inject the values yeah see here setter based dependency injection now we will deal with two classes one is car the other is user okay see here how a car class looks like it contains two attributes or two data members they are name and per day cost that means a user is uh, supposed to hire a car okay it has getter method as well as setter methods associated with these two data members and if you see here user it has a reference of car and a the value of car object is provided using setter method that means someone will call this set car method by passing the bean of type car bean of type car which i am assigning it back to my local variable and when i say get car it will give me the car object that i have got through the setter injection this is the typical example and see how the beans are defined see here i have i am creating a bean with respect to user first first talk about this let me uh, define a bean for the class called car with the setter injection because i am using property tag which actually uses setter methods correspond to these data members that we understood by now okay value equal to renault duster and the paper cost is 10000 rupees and user 
need to have an instance of car because it has a data member that is car and the value for this car is I am referring to a bean with ID car. I am referring to the bean with the ID car. So this is what we call injecting the dependencies. Yes or no? See here, user has a dependency in the form of a car and car is an altogether a different bean. So I am injecting the instance of the car through a tag or an attribute called ref. Then it will refer a bean with the ID car. So it found this. That means it will create an object of car with this value set and it will be injecting this car instance for this property using setter injection. Let us see this example live. So, I have car class same. The only difference is I had written two string implementation for our testing purpose. You can have it or you, you cannot. It's up to you. Then we have a user class. See, it is as same as your uh, slide. Okay. Next, go to pom.xml. Sorry, beans.xml. See, car. How I have defined the car class? As depicted in the slide. Nothing changed. But I am fond of I20, so I am going with I20. And the per day cost, I was a bit greedy, so I am going with uh, 2000. And uh, that's it. Next, user. It is referring to what? A bean with ID car. See here, just just uh, place your cursor here and say F3. It will take you to the respective bin. See, got it? Yes. So now the beans are configured. While using, how I am using it? For which I am creating an object. I am commenting this piece of code. I don't require this. See, I am saying that gut bean with ID, we will go with the ID for better understanding purpose, that is user, okay. What I would do is, I want an, I want a bean with ID user, it returns me a user, that's it. And user has a reference to car, right? I am getting that reference using getter method and I am invoking to string method. See, now the dependencies are decoupled. Yes or no? There is no dependency with the car with the user. Because the instantiation logic, setting the values, which implementation of it, everything is using configuration. Say run as Java application. See here, forget about this and this. Just concentrate on this. Car name is I20 and paper cost is 2000. These are the values that I have passed. Understood the dependence injection now. What has done just now? The application container. What is the application container here? My file system XML application context consumed beans.xml file. That is this. And it had identified several beans with different IDs associated with different classes. And when I call get bean with user, what it will do? It will search for a bean with ID user. It found it, but it found a reference bean called the car. So it identifies that bean, it instantiates 
this class okay by setting these values using the setter methods and set this entire object for this property that means it is injecting this beam for this property it is injecting this beam for this property got it this is what we call dependency injection dependency injection any doubts so any other questions from anybody else okay if not so bye for today and uh, meet you guys tomorrow have a good day ahead